My topic is on CXL memory, how the CXL memory use cases can be leveraged on uh, the Linux kernel system as such. Okay, so how the CXL memory limits can be expanded on Linux system. So uh, about me, I'm a Linux kernel engineer and currently working as a CXL software architect at uh, Micron and basically driving the CXL software architecture for Micron uh, memory products, CXL based memory products. Micron being the world leader in memory solutions as such. Basically, I've been involved in technical leadership and mentoring um, with the broad experience on Linux systems platforms spanning the embedded systems as well as enterprise systems and open source software development. So uh, the agenda is to understand what is CXL, what it brings on the table, why CXL and how CXL has evolved, and the different value proposition that has been supported by CXL, particularly memory capacity expansion and memory bandwidth expansion. Okay, so CXL is a um, Compute Express Link pro, uh, standard. Uh, it's an emerging cache core and interconnect standard for processors, memory expansion and accelerators that basically promises to revolutionize the way data center cost, performance and efficiency has been evolving. So why CXL? Uh, as we are aware, the servers, they are moving increasingly towards the heterogeneous computing, computing architecture with um, built-in uh, accelerators offloading the loads to particular accelerators as such from the CPU. And um, the memory cache coherency is one of the functionality which uh, allows, facilitates the sharing of memory resources between CPU and accelerate, uh, accelerators as such. So basically, DCXL benefits by increasing the bandwidth and capacity, uh, where, as well as efficiency and lowering down the cost, uh, total cost of ownership as such. So how that usually happens is to get to, uh, to the facts, why CXL, let's look at some of the uh, facts as such, uh, the differences that are seen uh, while this uh, expanding um, data center requirements are been expanding as such. So the, particularly the memory demands has been uh, growing in the data center application like, like uh, almost like 26% year to year. And considering that demand, the memory latency is improving at a slower pace, like one to one every two years compared to the processor speed which is doubling every two years. And the memory is not being scalable as per the sp uh, processor speed. And uh, another fact is that the, uh, due to this, the, there is an increase in the total cost for the data centers, like almost 50% of the total cost goes into the memory. So to how these problems can be solved of, uh, mm, uh, the uh, demand, increased demand for the memory as such. So that's where CXL uh, comes as the solution, which helps to elevate the above challenges uh, by providing an open source, uh, open standard interconnect, uh, providing, using, providing the higher bandwidth and um, low latency connectivity between the processors, accelerators, memory, storage and the other IO devices. And uh, so uh, here when we look at the challenges that uh, uh, that are there, so it helps to um, solve those problems as such. And uh, basically the, the way CXL uh, enables the expansion of capacity and bandwidth uh, uh, at uh, access by, uh, by be, uh, by providing the behavior like similar to the remote NUMA node access, like the CXL memory can be, has been considered as a separate NUMA node as such, okay? So, well, 
uh, we'll look into the basics of this protocol. That's where we'll get better uh, clarity on this. So CXL standard specifies the three protocols, uh, CXL.io, CXL.mem, and CXL.cache. So CXL.io basically provides a functionality equivalent to the PCI interface. And it has been, it has been used for a configuration, DME, and inter handling between the device and the host. Whereas uh, uh, CXL.mam uh, protocol enables hosts uh, so that is the, such as a processor to access the device attached memory using the load and store semantics as such. And the cache particularly specifies the uh, spending rules for accelerators trying to access the memory directly connected to the CPU. Okay. So here in this case, um, based on these three protocols, the CXL a consortium defines the different classes of devices or different kinds of use cases, uh, particularly type one, type two, and type three devices. And these uh, different types, they use the particular set of protocols that are, like in case of uh, type one devices, they support um, CXL.io and CXL.cache uh, protocol. And uh, when this combination is used, we can infer that uh, a tire one, uh, type one device uh, do, not do not contain memory, uh, uh, which is available for the host consumption. So basically this combination works for uh, accelerators such as SmartNICs, which typically don't have a memory. And uh, via the CXL, these devices can communicate with the host as such. Uh, type 2 devices are the devices that support all the three protocols, where in which case, like, uh, uh, if I can go on to the next diagram, that will help you understand better, where it, um, the uh, accelerator has uh, the memory connected, uh, high-speed memories as such connected to its own, as well as it can access the memory connected to the host host memory as such. And another is third type is the CIA type 3 device, uh, sorry, as type 3 devices that supports the CXL.io and CXL.mem uh, protocol. And uh, basically they target towards the capacity, memory capacity and memory, uh, ban memory bandwidth expansion. So uh, yeah, so this, this gives you the uh, uh, different use cases and the device types that are supported by the CXL. So here, what we are going to do, look is uh, I'm, I'm going to try a uh, target towards the two use cases that is CXL capacity and bandwidth expansion as such. Uh, so these are the two important value proposition that CXL attached device brings to the table. Uh, that is capacity expansion. And capacity expansion uh, is leveraged using the memory tiering, commonly using the kernel, kernel level support built upon the NUMA topology abstraction in the interface. And the bandwidth expansion basically been used uh, via the heterogeneous interleaving. Again, uh, the support is incarnated through the software level as such. Now, in case of uh, CXL memory uh, capacity expansion, the, uh, the configuration would be CXL directly attached tiering uh, or uh, CXL memory directly attached as such. And another is like the uh, CXL memory that can be uh, at the back of the switch or uh, fabric manager as such. So as the CXL protocol has evolved, the functionality for CXL switch has been added into CXL 2.0 specification, where multiple memory devices can be connected to the switch as such. And uh, with the evolution of CXL 3.1x specification, the more number of memory devices can be connected through the fabric manager as such. Okay. And again, the CXL um, attached memory tiering, they can be, uh, the memory can be managed by the application or it can be managed by the kernel as such. So when it is managed by the application, 
then the application is aware of the um, CXL memory which, uh, which, uh, high, uh, which is behind the new topology. So in that case, the application can make use of this libnuma library uh, to access the CXL memory as such. And based on the requirement, capacity requirement, it can modify the application. And another is like the application, unmodified applications can, can use the CXL memory as such it does not have to know the underlying architecture and such. The kernel does the work of uh, uh, allocating the CXL memory as such. So here in this case to give an idea about how the CXL memory uh, capacity bandwidth expansion happens. Uh, here let's take a look at the system configuration uh, that has been, I have taken this example from the paper published by Micron in collaboration with AMD, where the configuration is the AMD Burger Mo system uh, with a, a dual socket CPU has 128 cores, basically optimized for high throughput workloads and uh, it supports up to 12 memory channels, so allowing a total of 768 uh, gigabytes of memory, considering 64 GB as a per memory channel. And uh, based on the increased uh, core count, that is 128, the capacity and bandwidth per core is gets limited to 6 Gbps as such, uh, per core as such. Now, if we add uh, the CXL memory, uh, uh, like uh, here in this example, four micron CXL controllers, with the 256 memory capacity, and that gives the system capacity uh, and bandwidth, in, it increases to 14 Gbps per core as such. So basically like a system with the 64 Gb memory module that uh, increases the uh, capacity, uh, capacity of like 130, 33% comparity to the native DRAM setup and the uh, bandwidth expansion to 33% as such without CXL. So, uh, yeah, so uh, what we are going to look at is the memory tiering uh, as an uh, uh, been used for CXL leveraging uh, memory tiering used for CXL expansion, capacity expansion. So basically memory tiering is a uh, practice of dividing the physical memory into separate levels according to its performance characteristics and then allocating the memory in an optimal way as such. So originally all RAMs that came from the uh, DRAMs or DDR as such. Then as the memory innovation happened, uh, we see the persistent memory which is cheaper but slower than the HBM that is high bandwidth memory which is ex, uh, expensive and fast. And then we have the CXL memory. So these all is different memory uh, adds the uh, tires to the memory system as a uh, like cache. Uh, if you look in the order of uh, latency, like uh, cache is the fastest one, DRAM, CXL, persist memory and storage as such. So uh, uh, this memory sharing provides this additional capacity and also it helps like performance capacity trade off to achieve the uh, TCO gain. So here in this case, this uh, CPU, uh, 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 it connected. The near memory is in the sense which is attached near to the CPU, that is the DDR memory as such. And the far memory can be the other uh, other tires that might be uh, CXL or persistent memory and uh, eventually the storage which is, uh, which comes the access that is storage uh, bigger capacity, but it comes with a huge latency numbers. So here, uh, to achieve uh, uh, continuing on the CPU uh, uh, capacity expansion with the memory tiering, uh, this diagram that been taken from the paper from a uh, uh, transparent page trans uh, uh, page transparent uh, white paper that uh, 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 has the uh, analysis of CXL memory tiering as such. So here we can see that the latency 
access for CXL that sits between the main memory and the secondary storage uh, such as SSD as such. So to achieve uh, optimal performance, the high memory hierarchy focus on storing the hot, mem hot uh, memory regions that is the frequently used data uh, much closer to the CPU and that in the main memory and the infrequently used data uh, uh, cold, uh, cold uh, memory regions onto the secondary storage, which is typically larger but slower as such. And um, uh, like here, uh, while doing this, moving the data uh, between the main memory and storage has um, incurs a performance uh, penalty as such because of the uh, latency gap between the two. So there is an opportunity to use a new memory tire, um, which consists of higher capacity and comparatively less uh, access latency, uh, comparable access latency to the uh, main memory, that is the DDR as such. So CXL can be placed between the main memory and the storage media. And uh, the performance can be optimized, the goal can be targeted in such a way that the hot pages remains in the main memory. The warm pages or warm data goes into CXL memory and the cold data, uh, infrequently used data that, that can be moved to the storage as such. So here uh, the NUMA, NUMA uh, tech, uh, domain is particularly along with the memory tiering has been used for uh, uh, for uh, expanding the memory capacity. So basically the next com uh, community is working on uh, making changes and improvements in improving the performance and application uh, that are running across the NUMA domains. And uh, to get to a NUMA understanding, it's a multiprocessor model in which the processor is connected to a dedicated memory, but can also access the memory that is connected to other processes in the systems with the multi 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 tire architecture. So from the hardware point of view, is uh, Numa is um, is a computer uh, platform that uh, compromises multiple components, and in each of them there can be zero or more CPUs, local memory, and or I/O uh, components as such buses. And from the software perspective, Linux uh, divides the system into hardware resources, into um, multiple software abstractions called as nodes, and maps these nodes to physical cells of the hardware component platform. And these physical nodes, uh, as just as a soft physical node, the software nodes may contain zero or more CPUs, memory, and the I/O uh, buses as such. And the uh, other memories that is HBM and CXL, they can also be represented as the nodes, but they are like the CPU-less nodes as such. So here if we look at the, uh, the NUMA node memory layout. Uh, so here in uh, each of the node with memory, uh, Linux constructs the independent uh, in, uh, memory management subsystems and when each node it will have the multiple zones as such uh, which will have its own free list in use page list, uh, user statics and logs, all those things to maintain the, uh, the different zones as such. And uh, these zones as are, they can be like one or more, this runner DME, DME2, normal zone, high memory, moveable. And the zone list specifies the zones nodes to visit when a selected zone cannot satisfy the memory allocations as such. So, uh, so this is the basic concept that is that's, that works behind the memory tiering as such. So now let's look at how the page uh, page movement or demotion or promotion happens across this memory tiering as such. So when the page when the pages are unused, they can be moved demoted to slower tires as such. So here, as we have seen that the um, CXL memory 
can be CXL memory or the HB memory, they can be constituted as a separate new monode that CPU is, uh, so, and they, they are being considered as a slower tire compared to the DDR as a first tire. So when the memory, hmm, when the pages are when the pages are not used, unused, they can be, one way is that they can be reclaimed, freed, or they can be moved to a slower tires, such as CXL as such. And um, basically, like uh, page migration, through the page migration, uh, page migration during the reclamation process uh, allows the um, system to migrate the pages from the fast tires to slower tires when the fast tire is under memory pressure as such. So instead of uh, totally uh, moving you know, or the pages, the pages can be moved to the slower tires that are CXL tire as such. So basically uh, migrating the whole pages onto uh, other tire, slower tire, uh, usually does not hurt the system performance, but the other way around, like when migrating the hot pages that can cause system performance as such. And the, uh, so basically all this functionality uh, been, uh, it's driven by the memory management code that got merged through this TPP patches, which basically identifies and places the uh, hot core pages to the appropriate memory tires. and. Um, here, this is this uh, CFS entry knob that has been used that can uh, mm, that uh, disable that enables or disables how the uh, demoting of pages should be done during the reclaiming as such. And now, uh, deciding when the pages should be promoted back to the uh, uh, DRAM or a closer node as such, that is based basically on the NUMA balancing policies as such. So which basically does the work of moving the task and its data closer to the main memory. And again, that has been governed through the SysFS entry, uh, NUMA balancing uh, interface that enables or disables the NUMA balancing. Okay, and this NUMA balancing activity uh, can be monitored by various parameters uh, from this uh, VM stat we can get to know. Uh, how the new balancing happens as such. Okay, so okay, so let's look at how the uh, uh, memory management for the steering happens as such. So the memory uh, tiered memory it can be managed by the kernel or it can be managed by the applications as such. So when it has been managed by the kernel, the OS. Uh, can map the far memory into the application address space. Application can execute from the pages from the far memory that's CXL, but means it can allocate the CXL memory, but the, it's like it would be slower as compared to the DDR uh, memory pages as such. And the kernel memory manager implement various policies uh, for migrating the pages, hot and cold pages between the tires. Uh, when the memory, tire memory is managed by the application, uh, uh, in that case the application uh, can access the memory, uh, uh, memory as a memory map files as such, uh, which has basically been built on top of this DAX uh, device support, is direct access support as such. So here in this case you see that these are the unmodified uh, uh, are the uh, unmodified application directly using the uh, using the CXL memory handled by the kernel? Uh, it might be unmodified, or it might be NUMA aware. NUMA aware is means when they, uh, uh, the underlying NUMA architecture is the application aware, and based on that, it is uh, accessing the memory. Otherwise, it is if it is application managed, then it goes through the dev um, dev dex interface or direct access file system interface. Okay, so here in this case, the uh, the memory capacity expansion happens through the memory tiers as such. So based on the configuration, the multiple tiers can be created. So NUMA, uh, the NUMA architecture leverages, uh, fe feature is been leveraged to create the different nodes and memory tires. 
uh, and the memory place, uh, page placement happens uh, during the uh, reclamation when the memory is the fast time memory is falling short under the pressure in that case the pages would be moved to the slow tires as such and when they are needed they will be promoted back to the fast, fast, fast tire or the memory closer to the CPU as such. So that's how the memory expansion, uh, capacity expansion happened. Now let's look at the memory, uh, another feature or, uh, that can be leveraged for memory bandwidth expansion that is a memory interleaving as such. So to start with, like if you have uh, more than one DDR controller on the device, then there can be two options that is they can each of the memory controller can be used independently uh, and uh, independently as such or it can be used in such a way that two or more controller can be interleaved together to present a single unified address space. Okay, So that's where this memory interleaving comes into picture. Uh, it basically uh, makes the uh, part, uh, makes uh, participates the um, multiple memory controller appear as um, uh, as a single pool of memory and uh, spreading out the pages across the set of the specified nodes as such. Okay, so in such a systems, we can make use of the additional bandwidth provided by the lower tiles for uh, partic particularly for the bandwidth uh, um, intensive applications. So the, uh, there are the various uh, propositions for CXL interleaving, uh, various solutions, CXL heterogeneous inter, uh, interleaving as such, where the system address map is interleaved between the DDR, DDR memory and the CXL memory. So one is the hardware based interleaving, which is uh, uh, interleaving taken care by the hardware. Uh, it is easy to configure, but provides a fixed configuration as such and also not scalable for all kinds of workload. The kernel, also the kernel is not involved in memory management. It is all taken care by the hardware. Another option is hardware and software based interleaving where uh, it is uh, assisted by the hardware by associating the number of DMA channels to different um, NUMA nodes as such and then the kernel managing this new, uh, different NUMA nodes for allocation. And another option is the software based, completely software based interleaving uh, where the kernel basically makes use of the in, uh, NUMA interleaving um, infrastructure and manages the memory allocation. Okay, so here uh, we'll look at the uh, second, that is software, hardware and software based interleaving and then software based interleaving examples. So again, uh, taking an example from that white paper uh, with the same system configuration AMD platform, uh, uh, which offers a wide configurability for the NUMA domains. So it basically supports the concept of NUMA node per socket. As such, so the various combination here we can look at is the uh, NPS 1, 2 and 4. So in case of configuration for NPS 1, where each socket uh, is in a single NUMA node and with all the cores in that socket. And uh, here in this case, with this configuration, there is one NUMA node for uh, um, uh, for, uh, 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 for the memory connected to the CPU with all the CPUs into that NUMA node and another uh, uh, node that would be created for the CXL attached memory as such. And now in case of NPS2, which happens where each, C each socket is divided into two NUMA nodes with the six memory channels to each NUMA node. Means basically this uh, AMD process has 12 memory channels so with this NPS2, it's been divided into two NUMA nodes, six memory channel for one NUMA node and another six channel for a second NUMA node. So basically, uh, with this configuration, we have two NUMA nodes for uh, the memory channels and the third NUMA node corresponding to the CXL memory module as such. 
And uh, in case of uh, NPS4 configuration, the socket partition into four Neumann nodes, where with each uh, domain getting the three memory channels. And uh, another fifth uh, Neumann node that is created for the CXL uh, memory module. So here in this case, basically, this is the way the configuration can look like that uh, these are the four NUMA nodes with uh, each uh, with the three memory channels as such. And then, then there is a uh, next another fifth NUMA node corresponding to the CXL memory module. So with this settings, it enables the uh, software uh, page level intervening so that the pages can be allocated for a specific workload uh, to be distributed between the local DDR and the CXL uh, NUMA nodes at a particular, at, at this ratio, like in case of NPS1, it is one, one NUMA node and one, one DDR NUMA node and one CXL. So the allocation is for one to one mapping, 50-50 as such. So if a 100 page request comes, uh, is, comes in that case, 50 pages will go, will come from the DDR memory and the 50 pages will come from the CXL, uh, CXL node as such. In case of uh, NPS2, in that case, it is uh, two NEMA nodes and one CXL. So that is 66% from DDR and 34%, 33 to 34% comes from the CXL um, NEMA node uh, as such. Whereas in case of uh, NPS4, uh, four, it is like four is to one, that 80%, 80% pages come from uh, DDR and 20% comes from CXL. So based on the application, whether uh, uh, it is a capacity uh, bandwidth intensity, uh, the allocation can be formed as such. So the CXL uh, provides a large amount of memory, but it, it comes with the latency, uh, uh, latencies as such. So if the application um, uh, is a bandwidth uh, in, uh, hmm, sensitive in that case, more number of pages can be allocated from the DDR and then uh, corresponding pages can be kept from the uh, CXL memory as such. So the CXL memory uh, help in bandwidth expansion using this configuration software and hardware configuration uh, interleaving between the DDR and DRAM and the CXL memory. And here in this case, uh, I take an example of a bandwidth sensitive workload such as Cloverleaf. Uh, that can benefit from this configuration, NPS4 kind of uh, configuration, where it helps to reduce the memory stalls that are happening because it's been using the uh, uh, memory spread across the uh, DDR and the uh, CXL NUMA known as such. Uh, let's look at the software interleaving. And so here in this case, uh, we'll look at the software interleaving that is basically weight-based interleaving policy. So this feature basically is based on memory tearing mechanism, but it is aimed at a different uh, problem as such. Now here in this case, the uh, weight-based interleaving, what basically it addresses is like it tries to find a solution to what is the optimal original placement of pages. Means uh, how many pages has to be allocated from particular NUMA node as such. So um, here in this case, like uh, basically uh, uh, it addresses the practice of NUMA interleaving where the allocations are spread across a set of NUMA nodes with the purpose of getting a consistent performance from any set of CPUs on the system. And the uh, NUMA uh, interlink spreads pages equally across the nodes as such, uh, provided by the memory policies set by the application. So uh, NUMA interleaving itself does not have the ability to decide how the allocation should happen in, in what specific order as such, how many pages should be allocated from particular NUMA node as such. It uses a uh, uniform policy as such. So with this weighted, uh, uh, weighted interleave policy, the feature, what it does is adds the concept of weight uh, given to each NUMA tire as such, where these weights determine how 
how much pages or how strongly how strongly the allocation decision should be based towards each tire and uh, that higher the weights for a given tire it means that more number of pages will be allocated from that node as such so to the example here we can take as the tire weights that are controlled by the administrator commands and that uh, here again the system interface here the tire 2 uh, the weights are been assigned to tire 2 uh, like here in this case uh, is a scene from cp0 the weight is assigned is 20 as such so if uh, consider 100 page allocations then this weight of 20 gives that 20 pages can be allocated should be allocated from this this uh, memory that is there in the tire 2 as such Otherwise, by default, all tires have a weight of one as such. So if there are four tires into the system, then when a malocation happens, the interleaving will happen that uh, uh, it will be divided equally among all the four uh, tires as such. Okay. So basically, these weights are used by the NUMA interleaving code when the allocation happens. So the CXL, the, the, uh, we have the abil uh, ability of using the CXL memory, but as it comes with the uh, more delay or latency compared to the DDR memory, so proper weights has to be aligned based on the application requirements as such. Okay. So this is a feature that recently got merged into 6.9 kernel as such. Uh, the early patches that was been contributed by Micron engineers. As a, okay. okay. Uh, so that is about that is what we saw about the CXL memory being utilized for uh, memory uh, capacity expansion and bandwidth expansion. This support been leveraged through the NUMA interleaving. This uh, any any kernel as such. Now, again, there is another proposition for CXL memory sharing and pooling, where uh, memory sharing is type of memory that is accessible by all the processes in the system. And uh, it allow each process that uh, can read and write to this shared memory. And um, the benefits that uh, it provides in terms of efficient communication between processor, a simplified programming uh, model, and low latency and lower power consumption uh, is there. Uh, a memory pooling is type of memory that is shared between processors but managed by a specific memory controller. And uh, when we talk of CXL memory pooling, the CXL 2.0 onward specification supports the CXL switch and fabric where the memory, uh, multiple logical nodes uh, can be connected uh, thereby giving the multiple memory uh, devices can be connected which can be pulled together uh, forming a huge pool of memory and that can be shared across multiple hosts as such okay, and uh, it comes with the benefits of uh, memory allocation efficiently and uh, guaranteed access as such okay so here I wanted to talk a bit about um, the work that has been done by some of the Micron engineers on the uh, one of the feature that has been currently under development is the farm FS that uh, basically uh, organizes the shared memory as the file system. So it's open source uh, been introduced last year in the LPC. So here in this case, the various CXL devices, they are being formed uh, as a shared memory and then exposed as the shared, uh, shared uh, exposed to the application as the shared file system as such. And uh, this uh, share, FAMFS maps directly to shared memory and it, the application can directly use means a sim by, through a simple uh, memory map interface as such. It's been available on GitHub and basically the, uh, the target is to focus on applications 
such as AI, uh, AI application where large data sets are being used, which can be shared across the multiple applications. Okay. So here, basically, my intention was to cover the, these two value propositions and how the, those are supported currently in the kernel uh, architecture as such. Actually, as the CXL standard itself is evolving, and also the CXL development is evolving around that development as such. So this was more like what was currently present in the kernel. Along with that, there is a complete CXL driver stack, which basically takes care of the CXL protocols, the CXL, uh, particularly memory devices, which takes care of the CXL.io and CXL.memory, uh, interacting with the hardware, ex collecting that information from hardware, exposing the memory as a system memory or as a index device to the applications as such. And based on the application, whether they are managing memory on their own or uh, unmodified application, the CXL memory can be leveraged as such. Okay, so that's all I have for CXL memory management. So to conclude that CXL memory can be, can provide solution for increased memory bandwidth and capacity requirement as such. I'm taking help uh, leveraging the functionality provided in the Linux kernel to the new more and uh, in the leaving on memory tiering functionality. And this is the references that have been used. Any questions? You can take this. Thank you. Do you think we need we need some new policies, considering in CXL memory, or we can just consider it the same as the general Luma? So, yeah, so it will be as, uh, same as a NUMA node, but it would be a far, far of memory uh, compared to the uh, DDR NUMA node as such. It will be this Excel memory placed as a separate NUMA node. So, uh, so the policies they are being inside the configuring the kernel as such, but if you have a specific requirement based on bandwidth and based on capacity, that can be fine tuned through the CFS entries to distribute the load. Uh, 